Is this thing actually working or no? Come on. Refresh. It says that the frames are encoded. Why are you saying offline? There we go. Close ad. Come on. Give me some mouth. Mm. Yeah, yeah, give me some mouth. Mm. Oh. What's this button do? Oi, oi. There we go. All right. I'm looking pretty ish with the house in the background. Many tweets. Handle it. What does that say, Yami? What are you saying, Yami? So keep him company. <laughs> no, no, she's not in. She she tweeted. She tweeted. There's my wife behind me. But well, she's not behind me anymore. Uh, you know. That's fine. You can't talk soon, though, okay? No, starting at 9 in one minute. Ah, it doesn't matter. And actually, it's going to be slightly longer than a minute because I am getting something set up. Uh oh. Huh? Uh, not right now. Having to close things. Have too many things open. There we go. All right. I know it says it's 9 o'clock and I'm supposed to be starting, but I'm finishing up some messaging and we'll get started in half a second. So, hashtag don't be angry. And don't say hashtag like I did, because I'm dumb. Alright, almost there. Todos los nosotros somos, which actually doesn't make any sense whatsoever but I know Yami tweeted where where did your tweet go Yami or did you just like a tweet did you just like a tweet Yami is that what you do where are you at where are you at notifications there we go Yami retweeted okay Yami is a retweeter All right, getting started here, and it's 9.02. We're going to give it till 9.05. I'm going to, as I finish some things up, I'm going to finish some things up. I did not get all my notes done. I feel like a dumb butt, but that's fine. Is good, is good. All right, here we go. Nine. It's still nine o two. Really? Didn't didn't pop over to nine o three and all that typing that I just did. All right.
What are you doing in there, Bubba? Huh? What are you doing? So noisy. What? Really? All that noise you just made is considerate? I love you. What? No, well, I am. I'm just not recording yet. There you go. Luckily, I think I'm the only person watching me, so. Okay. <laughs> there's that. Oh, and Tysilis. So there's two of us. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We've been off for two weeks, so sometimes it takes a week for people to remember that we're back live, so. Usually about five six, nothing huge. But all right, it's nine oh three. I feel like time just slowed. Oh, it's nine oh four. Okay, time sped back up. Oh man, start recording in one minute. I like even numbers. I don't think it's going to be a terribly long podcast this week, but we do have some lovely emails to go through. I think I have like four or three. Three. Huh. All right. Here we go. Here we go. It's almost 9.05. Almost there. Oh, I don't need you open now. Quit. Quit it. There we go. There we go, yo. I don't need you open. Close everything. Ha ha ha. In three. Oh. In two. In one, and here we go. Welcome, friend, to the Lorecraft Podcast. And welcome once again to the Lorecraft Podcast. My name is Machik, your fun, furry, fabulous, feline, torn druid. And I am here alone tonight flying solo by the seat of my pants because my co-hosts are extremely busy uh one of them is waiting for uh something to happen and the other one had something happen to her and so i don't want to share what those things are without them here so hopefully maybe next week we can talk about those things and be very excited but yeah so no co-hosts tonight uh, you just get me, which also meant that I completely changed the show for tonight because the theme we'd been working on is something I'd been working on with the group as a whole. And last minute I was like, you know, I want to save that for next week when I have, well, maybe at least one or two or half of one with me. So, so the whole show notes thing has completely changed. And uh, so I really, truly am flying a bit by the seat of my pants, but you know, that's fine. That's when I started this puppy way back, way back in the day, it was me by myself, oftentimes flying by the seat of my pants. And that's what, you know, makes it a bit exciting though. At the time I wasn't doing it live, so I could fly at the seat of my pants and not, not fret too much because I could always edit things out, but you guys get it live, and I don't tend to edit my live because I want the people who hear it later on also uh, be able to, uh, you know, have the same experience. So we're back, two-week hiatus. One of those was Memorial Day weekend here in the U.S. of A, and uh, I needed those two weeks off. I finished up the semester and needed some time to kind of get things back together. And there's some exciting things I'll be talking about, but not yet. We'll get there. Slow, slow your roll. Slow your roll. All right. So where do we begin? Well, we begin where we always begin, which is... This week, the cross has this week across Azeroth. So what did I do this week across Azeroth? And I'm going to tell you, I did a couple of things and I wasn't in it as much as I would have liked, but I wasn't away from it as much as I had been. So a couple of things that I've been doing is I've been working on these Suramar quests. I've really realized 
that at this point I've I've hit my limit of Suramar questing and hit my limit of questing and I don't know what it is about Legion. Uh, I you know the storyline for me is phenomenal, but I feel like all I do is quest and you, this is going to sound weird. Yeah. I mean, we have the, the world quests, which are, you know, those are nice, but I almost miss daily quest. I miss doing, you know, knowing what I was getting into every day. And at the time I despise daily quests. And maybe these are those rose colored or rose tinted glasses that I'm wearing right now. But I miss having that kind of schedule and knowing, you know, if I skipped it, they'd be there tomorrow. And I haven't finished my Surmar questing. Uh, I haven't finished my rep grinds. I don't have flying. And I just don't want to do it. Which probably makes me sound like a terrible person. I did do some PvP with Floon, which was really exciting. I have missed doing PvP. Uh, I just I haven't done it much this X pack. Went in with Floon as a boomkin and had a blast. And looking forward to doing more of that. I want to get back into LFRs. Really enjoying it. The school year kind of took my motivation away, but I'm hoping to get back into the LFR and maybe joining you know some random raid groups to have some funsies. But I feel like this X pack has kind of drug on for me. I was really excited in the beginning and don't get me wrong. There's still some really cool. I, you know, I think Legion story wise is phenomenal. I think it really has taken me, uh, into the game lore wise. And I, you know, it feels phenomenal, but maybe I'm just getting older. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm getting old. Oh my goodness. I'm getting old. Aren't I? I, I'm missing some community right now, and this is this is me pouting a little bit, um, and part of that's my fault. I'll take full blame, and we probably all at some point hit this, right, where you feel like you need the community to thrive, but when there's no community, you're not on, which doesn't help to build the community, and I think I've hit that rut where I need the community but at the same point, I don't want to have to try and build the community. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I I mean, I have my people that I play with, you know, Floon, Sisal when he's on, uh, you know, but a lot of us have like real life world responsibilities too. So it makes it difficult to be consistent. Additionally, and I've got to say this, Blizzard, I think, has done a phenomenal job, but also screwed things up with all of the games that they offer because they're all to me, so much fun in one way or another. Because even though I've been doing some WoW this week, I've also been doing Heroes of the Storm. And I've also been doing some Overwatch. I haven't done any Hearthstone this week because I, at times I just want to throw my Hearthstone into a wall because the cards don't come out like I want them to, and it makes me angry. But um, but yeah, so so Blizzard has made these fantastic games. And I get really into them. And, for example, the questing in Heroes of the Storm right now. I feel like I want to do my Heroes of the Storm quests every day. Well, you know, for example, some of them are play three games as a warrior. So three games, that's about 20, 22 minutes apiece. You're looking at an hour right there. Sometimes I only have a couple hours. So I've used up an hour on Hearthstone. Overwatch, the new competitive season is in. I play a couple games of that. Those are a little shorter, you know, 13, 15 minute games. But still, you know, you play two, three of those, you've taken up almost an hour. Then you go into WoW, maybe you do some PvP, maybe you do some uh, questing. And so I feel like Blizzard has, for me, added these games, which actually takes away from my time playing Warcraft, which I don't know how I feel. I'm conflicted. I am... Uh, you know, at times I think, this is fabulous. I have all these games to choose from. And then other times I'm like, uh. and then of course I was dumb and I decided to try another MOBA. I tried Smite. Smite's kind of fun. Uh, the problem with Smite is, is one game takes 45 minutes and I just don't have the energy to do more than one game right now for that. So uh, I guess that's, again, I feel like I'm getting older and there's more out there now. You know, technology is moving forward, games are moving forward, and it's pulling me away from Warcraft, which kind of sucks, because 
for me the lore of warcraft is still phenomenal the the game itself is still really good the classes are great uh, i'm having a blast as a boomkin but and, and and additionally i feel like the community itself is kind of fragmented right you don't like when i first started playing back in 2007 ish i guess when i started playing back then well wait was it 2007 has it been 10 years oh my goodness gracious um you know you didn't have cross server you didn't have uh you didn't have things like uh lfr or lfg uh so so you actually had to talk to people in the game you had to communicate and that's been taken away to a certain extent yes you can still do it okay there are going to be naysayers out there but you can still do that well yes you can you can and that's fabulous but it's just easier now to not you just go in and you go, boom, I'm going to do this, or boom, I'm going to do that. And so, you know, a good example is BGs, right? Uh, in the olden days, you had to stand in the room where the BGs were, or at least that's how I remember it. I might be wrong. But now you can be wherever. You don't have to be there, and so you're not interacting with people. So, I don't know. It just, I, I've got to... I guess I have to reevaluate too. And additionally, you know, I've got big life things going on, right? So I'm moving this summer, you know, moving in like a month and a half to a new state, uh, you know, starting a new gig. So, you know, my, my, my daughter just quote unquote graduated kindergarten. Let's talk about that for a second, right? How do you graduate kindergarten? How do you fail kindergarten? Doesn't just everybody graduate? And um, anyways, so you got, you know, and, and everything else going on, in life and i just feel i feel like the pull right now of warcraft isn't as strong as what it used to be so and sisil's in chat here with me and yeah it's uh, it's been a long strange ride it has you know time is the, the game has changed the community has changed what i used to love about the game is different than what i love about it now um, but but the, again, the great thing is, is is Blizzard continues to make a quality game with a quality story. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put down Blizzard. I'm not gonna complain about what they do. But what I am gonna say is is I wish <laughs> I wish they had not invented these other games <laughs> that pull me away. Honestly, maybe I would have been pulled away about other by other games. You know, truth be told. But that's that's neither here nor there. All right. So I'm gonna step off this soapbox that I've been standing on and complaining um and we're gonna get back we're gonna get back to the funsies the the actual podcast okay so uh i haven't done it in a while but i am going to advertise this week for our patreon because i've done some changes to patreon i figured you know i'm i'm starting a new thing right i'm, I'm going into a new gig starting a new life woot very excited uh new new uh new job new new house like I might actually own a house for the first time in my life, which is exciting, uh, with my wife, of course. Uh, but you know, th this stuff's really cool. So I thought, you know what? It's time to update the Laura Craft Podcast Patreon. So there have been some changes. So for those that don't know, Patreon is what helps to support us. Now, Patreon isn't the only way. If you're on twitch.tv slash the Lorecraft, we do have a donate button. If you just want to do a one-time donation, love it. Uh, but our Patreon is for those that want to support us on a monthly basis. We don't do it per podcast because that would be four times a month, generally speaking. We just do it monthly. And that, you know, that, that helps to support the podcast uh, each month. And so uh, we have seven patrons right now who are fabulous. Thank you guys so much. Uh, but we are, I, I have adjusted things and I've adjusted our levels and I'm going to talk a little bit about that so you know what's going on, right? I'm not going to stay here forever. Uh, first off, our new levels are Crafty Supporter, Crafty Family, Crafty Collaborator, Crafty Producer, and Crafty Executive. Okay, and they're based on amounts, right? So Crafty Supporter is a dollar or more per month uh, up to crafty executive which is a hundred dollars or more each month and one of the big things that i've done is i've gone ahead and i've created a discord server and uh, i'm going to be using this discord server to interact with you our community because you guys are fabulous okay uh, so each of the levels have their own level in the server and it allows you different access to different channels okay again 
the Patreon it helps to support us. It's not going to change the quality of our podcasts in the sense that we're going to continue doing podcasts. We're going to c- continue to make them exciting and talk about the lore and talk about the game itself. Um, what it is, it's additional things, right? It is things that helps to enhance uh, what the podcast is, okay? So each of them has a Discord uh, level, okay? Allows you to chit-chat. Uh, with us. Uh, those that are on the producer or higher level actually have a say in what we're going to talk about each week. Okay, There's actually a channel called Brainstorming uh, in the Discord that's a- available f- to producers and, and higher. Uh, we have, uh, I'm going to be doing, um, I'm sorry, Collaborator and Higher. I've, I, uh, collaborator and Higher, uh, which is the $10 a month or more. Okay, uh, Because uh, I'm going to have more time, I'm, I've already started creating monthly desktop backgrounds for people, uh, and that's for our $5 or more. Okay, And then, of course, you know, shout outs, those sorts of things. And then our craft executives actually get to be a part of the... Um, uh, part of the show twice a year. So some some really exciting things going on with it. And I'm going to be using our Patreon a little more. I'm going to be posting a little more often. And I'm going to be doing these little uh, mini podcasts. They're not podcasts. They're going to be like little stories about different characters. So I'm really excited about what's going on with Patreon. And again, I don't do it often. I don't talk about it. We don't have ad- advertisers on our show. But the money that comes in from Patreon does help to support both the website, the hosting, everything that we do with it. So, uh, you know, even if it's just a dollar, right? If it's just a dollar, the more money we get, the the more extensive I'm going to be. Uh, there are some things that I'm going to be doing with the both the podcast and the website. Uh, and you know, uh, there's the dream of making five thousand a month off of this, which then I'll just quit my job and 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 take the Lorecraft podcast uh, and make it huge. But that that is way way in the future. We're not even close to that. Okay, so. Uh, check us out again. That's patreon.com slash the lorecraft. Uh, would love your support. But again, even uh, even if you're not able to, which I totally understand because I, I only support a couple of people. So I, you know, I'm not rich. So I understand that. So uh, thank you so much to those that are supporters. All right. My advertising is officially done. So let's keep moving on. This week we do not have any uh, we do not have any fantasy fables or add-on reviews. You know we were on hiatus for a couple of weeks, so I did not. You know I wasn't going to get a big add-on review this week. wasn't going to do a big fantasy fable this week. It was it was time to just kind of jump into our main topic this week, which originally we were going to be talking about Forsaken, but I want to hold off on the Forsaken until I can I I have some of my peeps with me, and decided to talk about something that is detrimental to my beloved Torin, to my beloved Shoe Hollow. And we're going to talk about centaurs because I did a little bit of research on centaurs and I realized we hadn't talked about centaurs, hadn't talked in depth about centaurs, hadn't talked about their history, where they come from, or, you know, the myth that they came from Scenarius. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, but we're, we're going to talk about centaurs. And for those that don't know, there is a little bit of centaur talk in uh, World of Warcraft Chronicle Volume 1, okay? And I'm, I'm holding it up on my shoulder so people can see, but if you're listening to this, it, that doesn't affect you, okay? I love my Chronicle Volume 1. I'm getting Volume 2 soon, hopefully. Uh, it's taking me a little bit. Again, with a big move, it's not quite as easy to do. So, you know, one step at a time, right? So we're talking about centaurs, and like I said, there's this myth that centaurs come from are, are like offshoots or offspring of Cenarius, and that's an in, in incorrect belief. Okay, centaurs uh, do not come from Cenarius. We're going to find out where they come from instead. Right after the no, there are no these messages. <laughs> I had to do it. But before we talk about centaurs, we have to talk about uh, a little place called Mashanshe. Mashanshe. Okay? Now, if you know Torn lore, you know Anshe, right? Anshe uh, is uh, one of the eyeballs of the Earth Mother, um, the eyeball of light, uh, but uh, the eyes. I, I, eyeball sounds ridiculous, right? And that's Anshe, uh, along with Musha. Uh, but but Mashanshe is an area. It's an area in Kalimdor, uh, also known as Loom of the Earth Mother, okay? And this became uh, a sacred ground for Torin, okay? 
And this is the area that we currently know as Decilus. But it wasn't always Decilus. It wasn't always, uh, well, pre cata it wasn't always barren. And then post cata you know, we've got some greenery coming back up in Decilus, but we also have demons, which is no good. Not a big fan of demons. So how did the Torn or the Shuhalo come to or go to or, or, or travel to this area called Mashanche. Well, what happened was is that it, this is a, a grassland or was a grassland, okay? And there were faint elemental whisperings. And of course, we know the shaman to be uh, extremely in touch with all uh, shaman, I'm sorry, Torin shaman to be extremely in touch with the elementals right uh torn shaman are some of the highest respected shuhalo in the tribes uh, they uh, commune with the ancestors and commune with the elements and ask the elements for their help. If you know anything about Thrall, you know that the elements turned away from Thrall. You also know going way back to before the orcs uh, came to uh, came to Kalimdor, or not Kalimdor, but to um, Azeroth, that they were in touch with the elements and durotar not durotar god draenor this is what happens when i don't have my co-hosts i make silly mistakes like that but they were they communed with the elements in draenor and then of course then the elements turn their back on them over there so elements can be finicky beings anyways so the shaman heard these elemental whisperings and so they they listened to them, they communed with them, and they thought they were part of the Earth Mother. Okay. They spent decades, and this is straight from Chronicle, they spent decades attempting to wake the Earth Mother by communing with the region's elementals and conducting celebratory rituals. Now, the Doran Shaman succeeded, which was fantastic. Unfortunately, it was not the Earth Mother they awoke. Uh, they did awake an elemental, an elemental, okay, a colossal earth elemental, and a um, a princess at that, Princess Theradros. Now, Theradros is a descendant of Therizane. You know Therizane from Deep Home during Cataclysm, okay? So Theradros is awakened by the Shuhalo, by by the uh, Torn Shaman, due to their rituals, etc. Now. In the past, the Keepers had imprisoned most of the Elementals, right? So when the Keepers, the, the Titan Keepers, uh, were forging Azeroth, were, were putting it together, so to speak, they imprisoned the Elementals because the Elementals were, uh, they were uh, emotional, they were raging, they uh, were not orderly, which if we know anything about the titans they we know that they wanted order among whatever it is whatever planet they were working on okay so the elementals were imprisoned uh by the keepers and they were imprisoned in another plane of existence now some of the elementals eluded this imprisonment uh you know they would they would hide and that's what theradris did it, she she hid beneath the earth uh, beneath the crust okay but by doing so she eventually fell asleep and slept for millennia as the chronicle says thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years and during this time she weakened and so the shaman the torn shaman awoke her and it's like waking up right you wake up in the morning you're hungry right so the first thing you do you go to the kitchen you eat something that's great Except an elemental doesn't just go to the kitchen and eat something, okay? Uh, they decide that they're going to suck the energy from everything surrounding them. And that's what Thera just did. Uh, you know, she was woken up, verdant surroundings, nice, beautiful plains surrounding her, and she consumes their energy. energy. And it regenerates her, but at the same point, it leaves the lands barren, desolate, Hence, we get Desilus. Boom, boom, boom. I wish I had a button to press would make boom, boom, boom sounds. I should do that. Hashtag another thing I need to do. 
So plant life across Manache, it just, or I'm sorry, Mashenche, uh, just withered, died, and we ended up with this this barren wasteland that pre cata you could walk through and just felt like, I mean, it really was a disgusting feeling to walk across. It was dirty. It was nasty. Uh, it was kind of grayish brownish. It was no, there was nothing happy about Desolus. And suddenly the Torn that are living there were like, what just happened? They had to suddenly search for food, search for ways to survive. You know, these these beautiful plains had 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 left them and they you know, they didn't know why. So this also, you know, this quick sudden death of this land sent ripples of course through all of Azeroth. And of course, Azeroth being a magical place, there are magical beings, specifically those beings that are in the Emerald Dream, who can feel this loss of lice, this huge loss of lice. You know, Desolus is a large place, and all of this plant lice, plant life dies. So of course, those in the dream are going to feel that it's going to affect them. And one of Cenarius's woodland sons, Zatar, comes out of the dream and decides to investigate what's going on. Well, Zatar, like Cenarius, uh, is kind of a, a half-stag type being. Okay? According to the Chronicle, uh, supple vines and verdant leaves circled his limbs and great antlers. Wherever his hooves touched the soil, dozens of saplings would sprout. In time, they would bloom into a lush forest groves. So Zaytar's investigation led him into uh, caverns that were beneath Desolus. He goes searching around, kind of poking around, trying to find out what's going on. And, of course, he runs into Theragus. And his whole purpose here was to imprison this princess who has completely destroyed this land. But the life energies that the princess had stolen are radiating from her and she of course to Zatar is beautiful so he becomes enthralled by her beauty he's like wow okay i'm i'm hooked i'm hooked well theragus also found Zatar beautiful and so of course a romance begins to bloom now the princess is aware of her influence over Zatar, and she uses this to her advantage. According to Chronicle, Thera just claimed that she had meant no harm to the land and that she was seeking ways to restore the region to its former beauty. Together, she urged, perhaps they could succeed. So she talks in Zatar into abandoning his quest to imprison her and instead become her mate. And of course, Thedra, or Zatar, being, Zatar being who he is is like, all right. So, you know, this is, he knows that it's against his nature. He knows that he shouldn't be doing this. But the love that he had developed for her had bloomed. He was in awe. And so, boom, a romance blossoms. Okay. And from this romance, the centaurs are born. Their barbarism would come to terrorize the lands of Kalimdor. Chronicle has it right there. As a Torin main, I know that the centaurs are evil, evil beings. They chased us across the barrens, trying to wipe us out. They followed us into Mulgore, and if it wasn't for the help of the horde of Thrall and, and helping us to rid ourselves of enough centaur to be able to make a home in Mulgore, there's the distinct possibility that the Torin would be gone forever. Now what the centaur lacked in elegance and beauty, they made up for in brute strength. These guys were strong. They were buff, okay? They were fast. Their lower bodies, similar to horse bodies, um, help them move across the landscapes quickly and 
their humanoid torsos gave them a nice strong uh, uh, or burly strength in their upper bodies. Okay, But there was a, as the Chronicle puts it, a penchant for brutality. And so Zetar, upon seeing what he, uh, his offspring were, suddenly was disgusted. He knew these were aberrations. He knew that these were uh, things that should have never come to being. He understood his sin. Now, having said that, he did try to connect with his offspring, but he couldn't stand them. He couldn't stand their look. He couldn't stand their brutality. We're talking about someone from the dream, somebody who has a love for nature, a love for life. And of course, the centaur could see this. They could see that their father had disowned them. He could see that their father loathed them. And so they took it upon themselves to kill him. A very positive, upbeat sort of thing, right? Your, your dad's not happy with you, so what do you do? You kill him. Now, understand that Zetar and Thedras did love each other. And so, of course, Thedras was grief-stricken by Zetar's death. She chastised the centaur. And, of course, they were besides themselves with grief that they had hurt their beloved mother. They begged for forgiveness. Uh, and, as Chronicle says, from that day forward, promised that they would honor and revere their late father. Okay, so they just entombed Zetar's spirit in the great cavern where she'd once slumbered, and um, that site was then turned into Moradon. And we've been to, you know, if you've played the game for any amount of time, you've been to Moradon, you've, you've run into Thedras, you've run into Zetar at some point, okay? Now, the Zetar were quick in reproduction, they quickly proliferated, and they fanned out across Desolus. And of course, their brutalism, their barbarism, bar bar barbarism? Is that right? Barbarism? I like it. Their barbarism was not kept in check. They, they were still vicious. And of course, they took it out on the first beings that they found in Desolus, which were the peaceful, shaman-loving, fantastic, best race in all of World of Warcraft, the Tauren, right? And the Torn are peaceful. They're you know, they're not they're not fighters. They they would they would much rather have a campfire and tell some stories than fight against a centaur. Now they'll protect themselves. But they don't feel like war with other people is is necessary or what should happen. And so the centaurs would go on to chase the Torin across the land. Now the Torin, Torin, <sighs> the Centaur eventually broke up into five different clans. Okay, and those clans are the Moradin clan, the Magram clan, the Kolkar clan, the Gelkis clan, and I feel like I'm missing a clan because I am. Which clan am I missing? Kolkar, Magra, Mordin, Gelkis. Oh, and Gallic. Gallic clan. Okay? So we've got five clans or tribes. Okay? Now, for those of you that played pre Kata, you could actually gain rep with two of the clans. You could gain rep with the Magrum clan and the Gelkis clan, one or the other. Uh, they were in Desolus, and they were warring with each other. We're going to go into that here in just a second. Okay, uh, They were warring with each other, and it was your job to side with one or the other and um, essentially uh, gain rep and help one side win this war. 
Okay, but <laughs> Sindor Hire best. No, Sai Siltorn are always the best. So let's go through each of these clans. And each of these clans were started uh, from one of the five uh, sons of Zetar and Theradris. Okay. So the Gelkis clan made their home in the southmost parts of Desolus. Okay. Again, this is the mortal enemy of the Magrum clan, okay, which is a brother tribe. Uh, the Gelkis clan was founded by Gelk, which was the second alleged offspring of Zetar and Thedris. Again, the Gelkis were, at one point, you were, you were able to befriend them, gain rep with them. It's not like that anymore, not since Cataclysm, which is really sad because I thought that was an interesting piece of, of Warcraft. Uh, and unfortunately, what you had to do is actually do evil acts against the Magrum clan, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. Again, originally led, led by Khan Gelk. Now, each of the leaders of the clans are Khans, which if you'll f uh, know anything about world history, um, the Mongols used a very similar system. So, and if you look at the looks of the centaurs, they, you know, they have very uh, similar facial and hair features of uh, Mongols. Okay. So, Khan Gelk was the founder, okay, of, of the Gelkis clan, okay, and the Gelkis clan originally were friends with uh, Khan Magra of the Magra, Magrum clan, but the Gelkis and the Magrum clans viewed things very differently. The Magrum clan had the idea that strength was essential, and that the tribe's survival depended on their fighting spirit. Spirit, okay. The Gelkis were more civilized. Uh, they, you know, are essentially the Gelkis were as close to what a civilized race was uh, or is in Warcraft, okay. And you know, they had a social structure. They understood common. Um, and so, of course, these two didn't agree with each other, okay? The Gelkis respect nature and their birth mother, Theradris, okay? So, the Magrim viewed it as weak uh, uh, to, be, to be beholden to nature. And so, for them, they didn't get along. The Kolkar clan is a clan that you actually run into a bit more often uh, in Warcraft outside of uh, outside of Desolus. Okay, they have settlements in the Barrens, and the founding leader was Khan Kolk, and again another alleged son, and the first of the Centaur Khans. Okay, so. Again, just like all the other clans, they don't hold any allegiance uh, to the others. Again, oftentimes warring. The Moradin clan was found by Morados, and they occupy and maintain the Temple of Moradon. Okay, so a shrine uh, to their ancient Khan and the procreators of the Centaur and Desolus. And then finally, the last one you have is the Gallic tribe, and they inhabit Thousand Needles. So when you run into the uh, uh, the centaurs in Thousand Needle, they are the Gallic tribe. Uh, again, found by Khan Veng, who was the fifth alleged offspring of Zetar and Theradris. Currently, not ruled by any definitive Khan. The other ones do have uh, Khans that technically rule them but they've come together as a whole in cataclysm uh the gelkis and the magrum come together fairly easily as they're in the same area uh, the kolkar as well if you look at 
uh, if you look at Wowpedia, uh, there's a part that deals with unification. Uh, the Horde and Alliance are actually trying to unite the Centaur clans within Desolus to com combat the Burning Blade clan. Okay, And again, the Kolkar, Magrum, and Gelkis unite, but that's because they're all in that area. The Moradin is really focused on Moradin, so they're not going to unite. And then again, the Gallic is out in Thousand Needles. Uh, they are less interested in uniting. Okay. Uh, after the Cataclysm, the Gallic tribe actually lost most of their settlements, where, which were on well, what is now underwater uh, in Thousand Needles. And they've re relocated to Split Hoof Heights, where two Khans actually lord over the tribe. Okay. Uh, it is revealed that the, the Gallic have actually sworn allegiance to Re, one of the lords of Skywall. Right? Okay. You probably think of what's what's Skywall? Okay, Skywall, one of the four domains of the elemental plane. Yep, you got it. Okay. So the Gallic tribe has, you know, essentially done away with dealing with the other tribes. They're focused on um worry. Okay. Eventually, after Cataclysm, there is a high con. Uh, this is actually come from one of the comics. Aratus uh, pulls them together a little bit, and this is after Theragus's death. Okay, uh, pulls the clans together, uh, but since that time, th there hasn't been a major focus on the Centaur clans. So you can see that if it wasn't for Theragus and Zatar, the Tauren could have easily lived peacefully for hundreds, thousands of years. Okay, maybe not thousands, but hundreds of years. But the Centaur, because of Theragus and Zatar, came about and uh, their brutality has been well known. Now, interesting things to note that the, the centaur actually claim that a white kodo is a harbinger of doom, harbinger, harbinger of doom, uh, which I would think that a white kodo is, you know, peaceful, happy. That's just me personally. Okay. And there is one area that centaur, torn, and quillborn, quillbore, all groups that hate each other actually come together and do trade. And that's at Flayer's Point in Desolus. Little, little known fact there. Okay. So the first con, again, was con Kolk. The second con, con Gelk. Third con, con Magra. Fourth, con Meridos. And fifth, con Veng. Okay. All five are deceased now. Good times. Uh, Eratus attempted to unite all the centaur tribes. And then, of course, there's a couple of the other centaurs that you run into, whether they're quest givers or, um, you know, uh, for example, you've got Her Hezrul Bloodmark, who is leader of the Kolkar forces in the Northern Barrens. You know, you've, you've got these different centaurs all over the place. Okay. All right. So now you know a little bit about the centaurs. They're not Cenarius's direct offspring. They're actually, uh, they actually come from a combination of a uh, elemental and uh, one of Cenarius's offspring in Zatar, which I think is kind of cool. And I still, as again, as a a wonder loving uh, and fabulous Torin main, will despise them day in. And day out. All right, we're going to keep on moving this week. We've got no questions and answers this week. I received none, which is fine. Totally understandable. It's been, it's been, been, you know, we've been, we've been off. But I do have some. Oh, time once again for those reader emails. We do have a total of three reader emails, and I'm really excited to talk about them this week. The first one we have is from Alessandro, Alessandro the Awesome. And Alessandro says, Christy Golden posted on Twitter that she's been hired by Blizzard, but can't say what she will be doing. 
I really hope she will be writing short stories for Warcraft to fill in the missing holes in the war story of Legion. Things like, Hello? Anyone seen Mechatork? Any of the three dwarven leaders? Lorthramar? Bane? Anyone leading the orcs since their last one was killed three years ago? Fleets of ships? Flying ships? Urel? Dragon flights? The Titan constructs all over the world? <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. Christy could just as easily be writing for this new mystery project everyone is joining. Thoughts? I wonder what she plays in WoW. All right, Alessandro, this is good. And for those that don't know Christy Golden, Christy Golden uh, uh, is an author, has written uh, a couple of books for uh, for the uh, what was it? WoW landscape or Warcraft landscape. Okay, um, she's she wrote Lord of the Clans, Rise of the Horde. Uh, Beyond the Dark Portal, uh, you know, it goes on and on, all the way up at uh, most recent ones. Let's see, uh, Warcraft Duratan with Chris Metzen, Warcraft the Official Movie Novelization with Chris Metzen. Oh, and she wrote War Crimes, okay? Uh, she uh, has written a lot of pieces. Some people love her, some people not so pleased with the writing. Uh, you know, Lord of Clans I enjoyed, Rise of the Horde, Love. You know, so it, it, hard to say. Some people like him, some people don't like her, not him, but like them, I guess would be what I was referring to. Okay. And uh, according to Wowpedia, Golden's favorite thing in Warcraft writing is Goblin Dialogue. So uh, in regards to the question, I uh, wonder what she plays in WoW. I'm going to say Goblin uh, if she's an RPer. She totally should be uh, an RP -er. okay uh but but yeah so she's been hired on by blizzard and so so what is she doing i'm i would be thrilled thrilled if she continues to fill in some of the things that are missing and y y some of the things you bring up alexander are so dead on right mechatork mechatork is in that cinematic early on of legion and then we don't see him again come on Lorthramar, no idea. Bane, again, early cinematics and disappears. Three dwarven leaders. Uh, I don't even remember in the, them in the cinematic. I don't even, who knows where they are? Are they still in Ironforge? Okay. And of course, nobody's leading the orcs right now. They're in Sylvanas, but does that really count? Where has everybody gone? Blizzard has done such a fantastic job in the overall uh, theme and, and arcing plot points of legion but you're right they're leaving missing things and they're th these are little things even if they had done just little quests little bitty things that could have helped us understand what was going on would have been huge but instead what they're doing is leaving us to guess urel i'd love to know where Yarl is dragon flights they've gone invisible titan constructs all over the world probably gone back into hibernation so yes we have all this stuff happening right now on the broken shore and the broken isles but we it does need to be fleshed out and the hiring of christy i think is fantastic she's already done some really fabulous work and so i think this can only be a positive thing for blizzard as a whole now, what it is, is a matter of wait and see, right? I'll be excited. So, Alessandra, I know not a ton of thoughts in regards to that. Um, I'm really hoping that she's been pulled into Warcraft-related stuff because I enjoy her, her writing. But it really is a wait and see at this point, and I'm, I, I have big hopes. Oh, my gosh, Alessandra. We did start early this week. I started at 9. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, uh, we started early this week because I have no co-hosts. So big apologies for that. I, um, yeah, no co-hosts. So I decided I wanted to get it done early. Uh, so uh, we we actually started at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so <laughs> big apologies. We're already on the mail section. So that's good news. Uh, and I will be posting this tomorrow because I'm not, you know, not in school right now, so I can get my stuff done early this week. 
Ah, ah, you're right, Alessandra. It is not. Well, it was kind of a last minute thing. I did not think that I was going to be by myself tonight. Uh, and then I found out I was. So uh, I'm actually going to be checking earlier for next week. I know that I'm missing at least one co-host next week. And if I'm missing two, I may pull you in. All right, let's look at, look at the second email this week. Second email comes to us from Sisil. So I've been relatively silent last couple of episodes, except catching live. Not slow to talk about not not a lot to talk about at the moment, but there is a bit of an update. As of this last weekend, I've earned flying in Legion, gotten my average eye level to 895, and attempted to pug a raid. Now, for some lore stuff. Thinking back to Wrath and Pandaria, we worked with a couple of factions of bug people that seemed bent against wake awakening the old gods, or at least that is how I interpreted it. If I am right, what would have caused this? Could they in some way be working as agents of Azeroth herself? Anyways... Happy hunting, Sisil. So here's the thing with that, Sisil, is uh, the, the 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 bug people were originally. Uh, how, what's the best word for this? Uh, subjects of the old gods, and my understanding or my belief is that the ones that we have teamed up with have broken away uh, from the old gods and therefore don't want to awaken them because they know what the old gods are, they know what the old gods will do, and they don't want that reckoning, that destruction, that all-encompassing uh, darkness to envelop Azeroth. I don't think they're working directly for Azeroth herself. I don't think they're working for the Slumbering Titan. Uh, my belief uh, is that they are just, they know the truth and they have been awakened from blindly following the old gods and instead know that they should definitely fight against the old gods. Now, could it be something else? It could be. Could they have their own plans, evil deeds? Maybe. But me being the peaceful torn Juhalo that I am, I like to think the best in people. And as such, I think they've just been woke. That's the word, right? Woke? That, that you kids use these days? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Final email. This is from Serlin. Greetings, friends. I'm halfway through Shadows of the Horde, and Vol'jin has mentioned, with some distaste, Blue Torin. Blue Torin are trolls who adopt Torn ideals and culture. I'm not familiar with any in-game Blue Torins, but I'd love to hear about them. It did get me thinking, though. Are there any important lore characters who abandon their racial culture for another? Thrall pops to mind, but I'm blanking on others. I'd also enjoy any thoughts on blue torrents just in general. It doesn't seem odd that occasionally an individual would see customs of a friend and adopt them, but if enough trolls are going torrent, it warrants a nickname, something else much must be going on, right? Walk with the Earth Mother, Serlin. Ooh, this is a good one. Okay, so let's start with the blue torrent. Trolls who adopt torrent ideals and cultures. Now, I've not seen any of them in game specifically but i could i could definitely see it happening uh trolls and torn are similar in a lot of different ways and more specifically uh if you were to be a troll shaman uh seeing the way that the torn deal with the elements might be something that draws you to the ways of the torn shamanism which is different than troll shamanism same thing with uh, druids. You know, Torin druids have been around longer than troll druids. And so troll druids, though they follow the Loa initially, uh, may see Torin druids as a step up or a step along uh, through enlightenment. And so the idea of, of blue Torin uh, is, is definitely feasible. I've not seen any in game, or at least none that initially pop into my head. Uh, but 
role playing one would be actually pretty interesting and I think fairly easy to do. Uh, now understand that trolls and Torin have not had hundreds of years of interactions. You know, trolls really were confined for the longest time to the Eastern Kingdom, while Torin were confined to uh, Kalimdor. Uh, when the trolls came over, they really were more in Durotar. And until the horde started to coalesce as a full group, uh, the Torn and trolls would not have had a ton of interactions. But it, you know, d would not strike me as odd that a troll would decide that they wanted to follow Torn customs, being that they are. Uh, so similar, okay? And uh, Alessandro's correct. Uh, they have sa the same burial practices as well. Um, so, so there's that, okay? Now, continuing on. Are there any important lore characters who abandon their racial, cult racial culture for another? Thrall pops to mind, but I'm blanking on others. I don't think Thrall actually, actually completely abandon the orcish culture i think he viewed orcish culture in a different way than what many of the lower class orcs viewed their culture okay uh, if you look back at uh orcish culture going as far back as uh drain or pre portal uh i think thrall very much followed the shamanistic ways uh you know of of those people before the elements forsake forsook forsoaked forsaked forsaked uh the the orcs on draenor uh due to nerzul's you know dealing with uh fell magic etc okay so no i don't think that thrall actually completely uh f forsaked or abandoned their culture uh, to a certain extent, Alessandro's right. The Blood Elves, the High Elves, both abandoned their culture. They did. They abandoned the Night Elf culture to become uh, Blood Elves. Uh, but uh, I, I think that is uh, almost a slightly different because they also then developed their own culture. Um, and then I like this. Every Warlock uh, abandoned their culture. That's true. Warlocks uh, do abandon their culture to to work with the fell, and then of course demon hunters uh, abandon their culture to become demon hunters. So Alexander's got some great ones there. Okay. Now, one of the things that I'd say is: Are there any characters, lore characters, that took on the cultures of another culture that was already established? Okay, so for example, say uh, a a a orc completely turning into not turning into physically, but turning into belief culturally, uh, etc., into a blood elf. Um, you know, taking on the traditions of blood elves, taking on the traditions uh, or not traditions, but the the customs of blood elves. No, I haven't seen anything like that, though. The idea of an orc in blood elf garb walking around uh, Silvermoon is both comical and intriguing and uh, definitely a role play way uh, a direction that you could go. Uh, I'd be interesting to see w what happens there. Um. So, yeah, so I don't, th you know, do I think it's, do I think it's uh, persistent through the game? No. Do I think that it's possible? Yes, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, NPCs like that. I think, if anything, what you're going to do is you're going to see role players doing something like that, which is cool, again. Um, oh, another good example is I still the first human mages taking on the customs of high elves. So I think I think what what we're seeing more of is I think we're seeing races take on aspects of other custom or other um, other races, but they're not going full blown uh, that race, right? Because they're still holding on to a piece of the race that they originate from. See, this is, I love you guys in chat right now. You come in, and we blow up with some beautiful stuff. I just wish I had been 
more specific about us starting early tonight because of no co-hosts. So, uh, too late to apologize. Too late. <laughs> I'm done. All right. So those those are the emails for this week. I want to thank those that email. If um, if you listening would like to send it to the email, all you have to do is send it to machik at thelorecraft.com. Uh, or head over to thelorecraft.com and use the feedback link. Both of those will get into the emails uh, and onto the podcast each week. Uh, and if you have a question that you want us answered, all you have to do is tweet at the Lorecraft. Use hashtag crafty questions at C R A F T I E, not Y. If you use Y, what you might get is you might get somebody building a table out of bacon scraps. Oh man, if Flume was here, he would have liked that. Damn you, Floon! Hmm. If I use damn, does that mean I have to make this explicit? I'm going to have to go back and look at that. I guess we'll find out soon enough. All right, so next week we will be back, uh, and we will not be talking about centaurs because centaurs are evil bastards. Uh, again, one last reminder, our Patreon has been updated with some changes, uh, with uh, including a Discord server, and discord roles on our server where you can actually get in touch with me pretty much anytime because i can stay logged into discord almost continuously and uh you can chit chat with me uh also uh alexander asks would you say gilnaeans took on a new culture Ooh, no no because gilnaeans still have their own culture they still have their ways their beliefs they just now turn into wolves werewolves I just think they decided they liked Twilight too much. Next week, we will have somebody with me. Whether it's Floon, whether it's Alisander, whether it's Sysil, whether it's a grouping of all of those people. It's going to be somebody. And so I'm excited that you guys will be back visiting with us. And we'll talk about something. All right. Now I'm just mumbling. Hi, Gigrin. Grin, grin, grin. Sorry, I'm saying hi to people in chat now. I should probably end the show before I continue to do that. As always. Oh, okay, we got one more question. I'm going to let this come because it's actually pretty good and relevant to something earlier. Do you think Jaina will ever come back? And is she back on the aisle where she was from? This is a good question. This goes back to our uh, our email earlier, uh, the island being Kulturas. Um, the question being, you know, maybe, maybe Christy Golden is, is here to fill in some missing things. Do I think Jana will ever come back? So this is what I think. I think they're, that Blizzard's not sure what they want to do with Jana. I think may, maybe they have a plan somewhere, but I don't think they know for sure what they want to do with her. She's gone a little crazy. But there's always the chance that she can remedy herself, which would be really exciting. So here's my thought. This is what I'd like to see. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Just something I'd like to see. I'd like to see her come back and she might die, but essentially do something that benefits both Horde and alliance together i think it would be huge and i think it, you know i think it would make her storyline almost kind of come full circle so yeah she is looking for a way to prove she's right and the blood elves are bad but i don't know i i think there's a full circle coming I'm hoping there's a full circle. And I'm a horde, you know, I'm hoarding it right now. So for me, if she were to die, it wouldn't affect me terribly. But I don't think they should do her that way. Just personal opinion. All right, folks, we'll be back next week. Really excited. Looking forward to it. You know where you can find me. I'm at Twitter, at MajikED. Say hi to me. We can go to Lorecraft.com. You can say hi to me there. Email me, Majik at Lorecraft.com. You can do all these things. And I will be ready to chit-chat with you. And of course, stay nerdy. Woot!
All right. So let's talk here. So Sarger Sarger Sargeras could use the sun well to come through if he dieted it. <laughs> Ali, you're killing me right now. If he dieted a bit. Um, <laughs> uh, going after Fors Forsaken, really? Uh, I don't know if she wants to. Uh, I don't think Forsaken. I think she's ticked off at the Blood Elves. She's ticked off. Um, because of Sylvanas calling the retreat at the onset. No, because I don't think that's important to her. I think what's important to her is her hatred for the Blood Elves right now. I mean, what happened in Dalaran, what Khadgar did. I keep getting yelled at by G Grin. I just like saying G Grin. Yes, G Grin. <laughs> yeah but she's not going to take out the council of mages she's not going to attack them she doesn't want the blood elves there and i i don't blowing up the sun well would be a bad idea i think it'd be a bad idea all around okay i'll give you all horde mages i'll give you that but I think there's more specifically, well, oh, that is, oh, that's a good question. Varying cutscene. Explain it. Okay. So should I explain it now or should I save it for next week's podcast? Or should it, I don't know. This is a toughie right here. What happens with, oh gosh. Oh, oh. Mm, oh. You're killing me. Uh, do I talk about it? Mm. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, so Varian didn't have powers per se, but this is a magical world, okay? And does his soul stay in the blade? No, I don't think though his death. Okay, so here's Logosh merged with him years ago. He's one man, not two now. Right. But so Oh god. Here's the thing. One of the things we have to take into account is the way he died. And he, was, he died via magic. And when magic affects you in death, something can happen. Okay? I don't think... But see, I don't think necessarily... The way he died means that he may not have gone and just, you know, gone to the light or however it is that, that, that we view uh, people who go into death who are not going to a spirit healer, obviously. We have to think of it in a way that the magic could have, could hold him. Could hold him to the blade. Warrior's death, does he go to Valhalla? Oh. Oh. The thing is, though, in Valhalla, I didn't see any human. I thought it was just Vikral. Valhalla is Vikral's... Uh, essentially Vykral's heaven. I don't think he'd go to Valhalla. I think it'd be interesting. But I think, I'm going back to the sword thing. Yeah, exactly. Odin could try to claim him, but everybody else would deny him. I'm going to go back to the sword thing because of how he died. Because of the magic that was involved, a piece of him could have been, quote unquote, attached to the blade. Because the blade's right there. And the blade is, you know, the blade in itself is magical. I mean, the blade is not a simple, you know, it's not just a piece of metal. It's got floatiness in it. Which, that's a terrible way of saying that, floatiness. Only if Odin lets him in. Yeah, yeah, I guess if Odin let, it, let him in. But again, I don't see... 
I don't see him going to Valhalla. I, that's not. He is. He's human. And whatever the light. The, the heaven, I guess. Has to be magic to do a thing. Well, they're human. They're a different human, though. I mean, humans and Vikral are different. They're the humans are descendants of Vikral, but I wouldn't call humans Vikrals. Oh, tiny Vikral. They're not and smarter. I'd, I'd call humans smarter than Vikral. But see, I think that can be how. But that's how a soul can be, right? So if we're, so, we're gonna look at this a little bit like. Um, what is this? Is this an ant? I don't like ants. Um, we're going to look at this a little bit like um, a, de a death, right? A death in uh, a violent death. Okay, some there are some religions that believe that when a violent death happens, the soul cannot move on and it attaches itself to a building, to an item, to a house, right? Okay, so this is a violent death. So the soul itself, the soul itself could indeed attach itself to the sword. So we, I mean, and and with the way the afterlife works in Warcraft, I think it's more feasible. God, these are good questions. I'm loving you guys. I need more of these conversations afterwards. This is why I did it on 9 o'clock, right? So we could have more of these. There's a full of souls trying to find their bodies. There. Yeah, but we don't know how all the magic in Warcraft works. There's not like a, a, a magic Bible that tells us how it works. Which zone? No, Varian's not coming back. Varian is dead. And, you know, I thought, and that's the way it should be. His death was perfect. Well, as perfect as I, I felt it could be. Um, his death needed to happen in a heroic manner, and it happened in a heroic manner. I think Blizzard, A plus on Blizzard for that one. They did that one perfectly. Whoa, okay. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. But Chronicle isn't the Bible, Chronicle is more information. If I remember correctly, somewhere they said Chronicle doesn't give you everything. Let me, where, where, let me see if I can find I don't know if it's in here. Hold on. Hold on. I'm looking. Maybe it was a tweet. I have to look now. Is Chronicle the definitive? I will find it. Yeah, I don't want him to come back. Varian should not come back. We have immortal demon souls. I love it. Hmm, I'm not going to be able to find I'm going to have to do some research. I'm going to have to do some research. But I believe somebody tweeted 
or said that Chronicle is not the definitive. Well, Arthas is gone. Arthas is okay. Lich King. So <laughs> I watched Lick King. Uh, I watched a. I don't know one of those cartoons. It was funny. Anyways, so the Lich King. This is this is something I think we talked about um, last week, or maybe I just talked with Floon about it. Um, but if you if you do, I think it's the. Of course, the Death Knight quest, uh, Death Knight artifacts, and I want to say one, maybe one of the mages artifacts. Yeah, see, Bolvar's in several of the class stories. Um, I think there's more information in there about that. Um, and he's actually viewed, if I remember correctly, he's viewed in two different lights. One light is a good light, one light is a bad light with, with how he interacts within the story itself. Um, and there's a very distinct possibility, and and one of the things that that I brought up is that we could very much see Bolvar in play in an expansion. Um, yeah, and that's the thing: is Bolvar or Nerzul in charge? Well, and I, I I'm gonna say Bolvar's in charge right now, but it's a tentative grasp. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry, I didn't mean to yawn into the microphone. It's a tentative grasp. Um, I mean, we're we're we're. I mean, we just had Legion, or we just had Burning Crusade Part Two, so it's time for a Wrath Part Two. So uh, it could very well be the ne next expansion. Right, he's asked it. It isn't terrible in the eye of the beholder, though. I mean, we're getting a bit judgy there, don't you think? Just saying. Yeah, but we Nerzul was never completely removed from the equation so nerzul is there somewhere <laughs> okay well if you play it at death knight of course you can be judgy mcjudgerson um and of course there's always the uh, the, the the possibility of old god infusion old god whispers uh, having effect on the lich king and well effect on a whole variety of things I'm hungry. Jay, hey, when that happens, when food is sort of. There's Zool's soul. Which means he's still very much in play. Whether he's in the, uh, you know, shards of Frostmourne. <laughs> well, Alessandra, maybe your mage should have been a bit nicer. And maybe he wouldn't have tried to kill him. Just, you know, just putting it out there, right? Uh, a, a troll kingdom soon? We haven't had a true troll expansion, have we? Huh. I don't know if there's troll lands to actually have an expansion with, though. Is there? I mean, new lands. Yeah, I guess. I don't want to be on an island again. <laughs> it's just me. I'm done with islands. Can't we have a continent on the other side of Azeroth? 
that'd be much more enjoyable. Yeah, I think I think I think a full troll X back would be fun. Evil trolls though, not good trolls. I mean we had a troll zone in Wrath. Uh Cataclysm didn't have a troll zone. Pandaria didn't have a troll zone. Though there were obviously trolls involved. And then... What was after Pandaria? Was that Legion? Was Pandaria before? No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Warlords. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've tried to forget Warlords. My bad. Warlords happened. Um, yeah, I don't remember Trolls and Warlords. So, it's time for a good Troll. It's time for Trolls again. Let's just put it that. We need more Trolls, 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 Trolls. Yeah, but that's recycling. What I wouldn't give for a Klondike bar. Well, true, but that's, it's going to happen. You're going to, I mean, yeah. being in theater, the one thing we learn early on is that there is nothing new. Everything is recycled. Every story, every play, every plot point, every idea is recycled. There is no longer new stuff because it can always be found in the classics. So, though we say it's recycled, which it is, the idea is... Oh, the battle for Un Undercity. Yes, the battle for Undercity was amazing. Yes, but there's the thought that killing off potential character or killing off characters, you know, people almost expect that now. You know, we're in a day and age where killing off those types of characters is something that should happen rather than something that is a shock and awe. Yeah, I we read that email today and i'm totally with you i think she'd do a phenomenal job and i think it would for those of us that are shoe hollow lovers would love to hear a bit more about bane because hashtag torin right i mean there are other things too but if she could just focus on torin for a bit i'd be okay with that make me feel better at least I like that dance, dance. Dance. 
How do you mean dystopian? I'm confused what those last two comments were in reference to. No, 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 not that. What I mean is, is that we've hit a point in storytelling where uh, audiences almost expect main characters to die. If you look at some of the television shows, uh, movies and things like that that are out there, um, the idea of the hero uh, ending up alive and well at the end is less likely uh these days than what it was once was which i i don't necessarily think is correct but i think uh as an audience right as an audience we've hit a point where we almost come to expect it rather than to not expect it uh i was watching well I understand that, and some people don't, but there are a lot of people that do. Um, and that's, you know, you, you know, again, you're talking to somebody who does entertainment for a living. So for me, you know, as an entertainer, I, <laughs> I like everything. So whether they live or die. Well, we have to define majority though, right? I mean, are we talking about majority of people in general? Are we talking about majority of gamers? Are we talking about majority of uh, blood elves? Which, let's just avoid blood elves, right? Um, <laughs> oh, sniping on blood elves today. It's because I don't have Yami here. It's easy to do. Uh, what I would say is that those types of television shows or movies are successful. And if they're successful, then people are watching them. Whoa. I don't watch snuff movies or torture porn movies either. Uh, but those aren't making multi-million dollar uh, blockbuster hits either. <laughs> oh my gosh. When I first see a snuff movie make a, be a hit on, on in film, I'm going to be scared that we've hit a point in life that we should not be at. Um, so I guess, you know, if that were to happen, then... There's a lot of other screwed up things that have probably happened to lead up to that. Oh, we're going deep today. Hunger Games and Saw franchise are torture porn? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree. Uh, for me... The deaths are not an excitement, per se, which, you know, associating the word porn, one, uh, you know, I immediately think, you know, exciting um, arousal in some way. Uh, for me, Hunger Games, not the software. I actually have never watched a, a Saw movie, so I, I cannot be very helpful there. But with the, um, with the Hunger Games, for me, there is an empathy uh, to those characters that die as well as an empathy towards the characters that live and so it's less about you know something that quote unquote turns me on and more about something that makes me feel um i like i like movies that make me feel oh final destination is terrible too Huh. I watched the first one and never watched the other ones. Uh. 
Oh, I don't know Dexter either. Yeah, see. Most of my stuff comes from Netflix, Amazon, Prime, and Hulu. So uh, Dexter, I think, might actually be on one of those now. But um, I'm more of a sci-fi fantasy type television watcher. Uh, although I've gotten really big into anime recently. Uh, I've just been watching... Um, I've uh, been watching uh, uh, Attack on Titan, which is phenomenal. Uh, but yes, I agree. Varian died a hero. I think that's the way he should have died. I teared up again. Goes back to my empathy, right? Uh, it was very empathetic uh, and really enjoyed his 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 death. And my preference is for things like that to happen, i.e. going back to the Jaina thing. I'd like to see Jaina if she ends up living even better but i'd like to see her, her come back um in some way to be a uh, a heroic figure and not necessarily a tragic figure you know uh i don't need more agamemnon agamemnons uh or um or styes or any of those greek tragic heroes If you don't know the tr Greek tragic heroes, trust me, you're not missing much. Oedipus. <laughs> Ouch. Right? Oh. See, I think that's where we differ a little bit. I like crying. It's weird. I mean, I like crying for the right reasons, I guess. I hate crying for the wrong reasons. I don't know. I guess for me it's release. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we talk about catharsis, okay, a release. Uh, and, and for me, and I'm not saying I only want to cry. You know, I, I indeed like a win as well. Wins are great. Uh, and although sometimes those make me cry too. I'm such a baby. I'm not going to lie. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I would, I, I can understand that fully, uh, fully understand that. Uh, escapism is something I think a lot of us do, uh, in one way or another. Um, but I think, it, but, you, but you have to admit different people escape in different ways. Um, i.e. it's the reason I sketch and draw and do lots of different things. <laughs> and now training to do a half marathon, which was the dumbest thing I've ever done. But you do what you do, right? Well, we'll see if it's good in 12 weeks. <laughs> uh. When I'm huffing and puffing and just trying to live. Uh. Do you know how far 13.1 miles is? It is not a short distance. <laughs> uh. All right. Oh my God, it's 1037 already. You guys kept me chatting for almost 40 minutes extra. No, 30 minutes extra. Basic math is hard for me. Okay, so I'll give you this. I will agree with that there's been a lot of deaths especially this or what i feel is a lot of deaths especially in this and the previous x pack so one of the things there's got to be a fine balance because you don't want every hero to always win um because that reduces uh or at least reduces my empathy towards them they become a caricature 
you know, I like people with positives and negatives, and I'd like things to happen that are both positive and negative to these people. And so, um, you know, my feeling is, is, you know, I don't necessarily want everybody to die, but I don't feel like, you know, people can be here forever. But I do think their stories need to be continued and, and finished in, in some way. Thrall's a good example, right? I don't, I don't feel like there's an end to Thrall's story, and there really should be. Uh, Jane is another one. There's not, there has not yet been an end to her story. Uh, I, again, I don't necessarily think that it has to be death. Uh, you know, they could go retire and, and start a farm somewhere. Maybe uh, in Pandaria. There's lots of farming areas up there. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually miss Pandaria a little bit. Scenery there was beautiful. I just said that out loud. Boy. Yeah, well, yeah, they screwed up on Vol'jin. Vol'jin was, there should have been a lot more to Vol'jin. And he didn't get anything, and you're right. I, th I think it sucked. I think, uh, yeah, I, th well, I agree. I think the class stories are really nice. I think the artifact questing is really nice. I mean, Blizzard, you know, sometimes great, sometimes terrible. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> uh... All right, I do have to run, guys. Uh, I have to, I have to do a couple things before bed, and I'm actually hungry. Um, again, oh, here is for those. Uh, that are interested. Where'd my invite code go? That's the invite court, uh, code for the Lorecraft Podcast Discord. Um, it'll put you in the lobby, and then I just have to uh, put a title to you um, for those that are... Yeah, for those that are not Patreon, I, I, you get the crafty tag. So uh, if you are, uh, then you get a specific tag based on your thing. <laughs> I'm very deep there. All right, guys. Have a fabulous night. Oh, my God. Emails just vomited all over me. <laughs> all right. You guys take care. We'll chat more later. Looking forward to it. And I am out. If I can find the right button.